Happy New Year! My name is Robin Wong. I'm a photographer based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. This is my first video for the year 2022 and I want to talk about tips on optimizing dynamic range using Olympus cameras. Let's do this! I've talked about this topic before, optimizing dynamic range for Olympus OMD cameras. I made a video about two years ago. However, that particular video faced a copyright claim. It is the music that I've used for that video. Long story short, I didn't want to dispute or fight, though technically I wasn't really wrong. But hey, this is an opportunity for me to redo the dynamic range topic and at the same time I can throw in some new tips. Tip number one, to get the best possible dynamic range out of your Olympus OMD camera, shoot at ISO 200. ISO 200 is the base native ISO. Anything lower or higher than ISO 200, you will get less dynamic range. I know a lot of people will give you the advice that says you must shoot at the lowest ISO number to get the cleanest possible image. That's not true for Olympus OMD cameras. The base ISO is ISO 200. If you go lower than ISO 200, say ISO low, ISO 100 or ISO 64, it is basically an over exposed ISO 200 image, meaning that you will lose about one stop or more dynamic range. We already have limited dynamic range to deal with shooting with Micro Four Thirds system. One stop or more dynamic range is a lot. Therefore, I highly, highly recommend that you stay at ISO 200 if you really care about dynamic range in your images. Tip number two, shoot raw. I know there's the long argument about RAW versus JPEG. There are purists who will never go to RAW and do any photo editing. But if dynamic range is what you really prioritize in your photography, depending on what kind of photography that you do, you want to avoid highlight clippings, you want to recover as much details from the shadows, dynamic range, then you must shoot RAW. The amount of data that you can store in that RAW file and pull out from it during post-processing is a lot more than you can imagine versus what you can get from just JPEG. Shoot roll, spend a little bit of time doing post-processing, recover the highlights, boost up the shadows, then you'll get much more dynamic range in your photograph. You'll be amazed. If you shoot at lower ISO numbers, ISO 200, 400 with your Olympus OMD, you don't severely overexpose or severely underexpose, you can recover a lot of dynamic range. Tip number three, use highlight and shadow clipping warning. This is very useful, especially when you are actually shooting. The warning will tell you the extreme ends at the highlight or shadow, if there is any clipping, you can see it being highlighted on your screen while you're composing through the electronic viewfinder or the LCD screen. To find the highlight and shadow warning display, you have to go into the menu, press the menu button, then you go to the cogs or the gear icon. Here, you have to go to D1, D for display. D1, under D1, go into info settings. Inside info settings, then you find this info, inside LV info, then you go to custom one, 
inside custom one, then you enable highlight and shadow. Once this is enabled, just make sure it's checked. You exit the menu. Then in this display, if you want to enable the highlight and shadow warning, you just have to cycle through info. Just press the info button, then you'll see the different kind of warning. So currently there is nothing overexposed. You don't see any warning because the exposure is still within range. I'm going to intentionally overexpose. So now it's being overexposed. I'm going to cycle through the info button to review the warning. You can see now the red patches in the sky that tells you the area is being overexposed and you can't recover any details anymore. Similarly, I'm going to intentionally underexpose the shot. And now you can see the blue patches in the image. That's the warning telling you that that part is too underexposed. You just get pure black and you don't get any details. So this highlight and shadow warning can be really useful for you to make sure that whatever that you compose in your image, your exposure stays within the dynamic range of this camera. Tip number four, highlight and shadow control. This tip is only applicable if you are shooting in JPEG. Highlight and shadow control allows you to control the highlight region and the shadow region separately. You can turn down the highlights without affecting the other parts of the image, or you can boost the shadow or even crush the shadow in the shadow region of the image without affecting other parts of your photograph. I think this is a very handy tool if you want to have a little bit more control over the highlight and shadow and how much dynamic range you want to save in your photograph. To find the highlight and shadow control, first you have to activate the super control panel, press the OK button to bring up the super control panel, and it is the one at the bottom right corner here. This is the highlight and shadow control. This is true for newer Olympus cameras. If you are using one of the older cameras, then the shortcut button usually is at the top right corner of your camera. Once you have this feature activated, you can control the highlight and shadow individually by turning the front and back command dials. The front command dial will control the highlight. You see, as I bring up the highlight or I bring down the highlight, it controls the exposure in the sky without affecting the exposure at other regions of the image. Similarly, if I use the back command dial to turn the shadow, I can change the shadow region make it brighter or darker without changing exposure in the brighter region of this image. You can basically control the highlight and shadow individually. Tip number five, HDR shooting. This tip is also only applicable for JPEG. In your Olympus OMD camera, there is the HDR function. If you activate the HDR, the camera will take four images consecutively, four different exposed images from overexposed to underexposed, and after that, the camera will automatically stitch all these photographs together into a high dynamic range image. That photograph will preserve details from the highlight and also details from the shadows, giving you a very flat, neutral looking photograph with optimized dynamic range. To go to HDR mode, press menu, under menu, then you go to camera menu 2, shooting menu 2. Here, there's HDR, turn it on. Now you have two options, HDR1 and HDR2. HDR1 is a more natural looking output, whereas HDR2 will look a little bit more painterly and definitely will give you a little bit more dynamic range. We'll, we'll go for HDR2 for the dramatic impact. Now with HDR2 enabled, once I've half pressed the shutter button and I release it, the camera will take four shots and immediately the camera will merge everything together into a final output. So that's the image which has the HDR. I'll just disable the HDR now so that you can see the difference with and without HDR. I'll take a photograph now. This is no HDR. This is no HDR. And this is with HDR. Tip number six, shoot with OIMLOCK 400 or the flat profile. This is applicable if you're shooting video with certain Olympus cameras. If you have the OMD EM1 Mark II, EM1 Mark III, and the EM1 X, then you have access to the OM Lock 400, which will give you the best possible dynamic range shooting video with Olympus cameras. If you are using the EM5 Mark II, EM5 Mark III, then you have access 
access to the flat profile which I'm currently using. I'm shooting with the EN5 Mark III and the Olympus 45 f1.8 lens. This is the ungraded footage. It gives you very, very flat looking, neutral looking output and it's very, very good to preserve highlights and shadows and you can easily grade the footage. For me, the flat profile is good enough but if you want the best out of the Olympus cameras, then go for the OIM Lock 400. To find the flat profile or the OIM lock profile, go to the menu, press the menu button, then go to the video menu, which is the third item from the left. Inside the video menu, go to specification settings. Inside the specification settings, you have picture mode. Here, you have to turn it on. Now, I'm using EM5 Mark III for demonstration. Here, only flat profile is available. Once picture mode is enabled, then you exit the menu, Press OK to bring up the Super Control Panel. Here at the top right corner, this is the flat profile. It's, you can't change to other picture profiles like Vivid, Portrait or Natural. It's fixed at flat profile. That's all the tips that I have to share on how to optimize dynamic range shooting with your Olympus OMD cameras. Do you have any other tips to share that I've missed out? Please leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. If you found my sharing beneficial, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal. Links in the description below on how you can do that. Any small contribution goes a long way. It will definitely help me to continue making similar content and publish them right here. Please give me thumbs up, comment, share and subscribe. I'll definitely see you again in the next one. Until then, please go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.